Hello, it's Saturday the uh, 21st of February. You're tuned in to our 6pm newscast coming to you from Ali Dang's News Centre in Seoul. It's great to have you with us. I'm Mark Broom. Shops and businesses are open and Korea is gradually returning to regular day-to-day -day life. This weekend, after the three-day Lunar New Year holiday ended on Friday, millions of Koreans made trips back to their hometowns, as is customary over major holiday periods, and it appears a significant number have waited until this Saturday to return to Seoul as the nation's major expressways are fairly congested. If you were to set off right now, the estimated travel time from the southern port city of Busan is five and a half hours. From Guangzhou in the southwest, it will take you around the same. And from Kangneung on the east coast, expect to be sat in the car for about four hours. For real-time traffic information from all major cities to Seoul, check out roadplus.co.kr. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has overseen an artillery and landing exercise by frontline units deployed near the West Sea as the North flexes its own military muscles ahead of annual U.S.-South Korea exercises. Pyongyang state-run media reported Saturday that the drill was focused on training for striking and seizing an island. The report said the North's Fourth Corps, which led the deadly shelling of South Korea's Yonpyongdo Island in 2010, also played a key role in the drill. A North Korean daily also carried pictures of Kim, as you can see there, overlooking the drill and inspecting the firing of missiles. The report made no mention of when or exactly where the exercise took place. South Korea and China are expected to take a big stride forward next week in terms of their long-planned free trade agreement. A high-level trade ministry official in Seoul says the two sides have reached agreement on a number of previously unresolved technical issues, uh, this during closed-door talks. The official says that once the tentative accord is signed, the Korean government will announce the details of the FTA. The pact, which is aimed at removing most of the trade barriers between the two countries, could take effect this year if the ratification process goes uh, smoothly. This is a massive deal for Korea, is, as China is by far and away Korea's biggest trading partner. In 2014, Korean exports to China were worth more than 145 billion US dollars. Greece has secured some much-needed breathing space after reaching a deal with Eurozone finance ministers on its bailout package. Uh, Brussels has agreed to extend the loan to Athens by four months. In return, Greece has promised to honour all of its financial commitments in a timely manner. Jim Young Gil reports. The deal struck by European finance officials on Friday will unlock further aid from Greece's 273 billion US dollar bailout package and extend the deal for another four months. Uh, there is a hope to reach in the end a pos positive outcome and to have a successful uh, review and conclusion of the program in time. Uh, and that uh, required trust. And I think tonight was a first step in this process of rebuilding trust. As you know, trust comes or leaves quicker than it comes. On Monday, Greece must send its creditors a list of all the reforms it plans to take over the next four months. If the measures are deemed acceptable, European finance ministers could sign off on an extension of the bailout agreement on Tuesday. If ratified, the deal will end weeks of uncertainty since the election of a leftist-led government in Athens, which had pledged to reverse austerity. Today, we have found partners amongst those who up until very recently looked at us with suspicion. There are some partners still that are looking at us with suspicion. This is our challenge to win over their trust, and we intend to do the, this. Greece's biggest creditor, Germany, had demanded a significant improvement in reform commitments by Athens before it would accept an extension of Eurozone funding. Without an extension of international support, Greece risked a run on its banks and would have had trouble paying its bills. Two previous attempts to secure an agreement in the last 10 days had failed. 
The euro gained ground on news of the deal, but European markets have largely taken the uncertainty over Greece's fate in their stride. Kim Young-gye, Arirang News. And uh, Russia's credit rating has been downgraded to junk by credit rating agency Moody's, which says the crisis in Ukraine, the tumbling price of oil and the weak ruble have severely undermined Russia's economic strength. In a statement Friday, Moody's cut Russia's rating one notch from BA1 uh, to BA1, rather, from BAA3 with a negative outlook. This marks the first time Russia has slipped below investment grade in well over 10 years. The agency added that Russia will experience a deep recession this year and a continued contraction in 2016. The cut comes a month after S&P lowered Russia to junk, assigning the country a BB plus rating with a negative outlook. Members of the Islamic State militant group have claimed responsibility for bomb attacks that killed at least 40 people in eastern Libya on Friday. Three bombs went off in the town of Kuba, targeting a petrol station, a police station, and the home of a Libyan lawmaker. You're looking at the aftermath of those explosions. The militant group says the bombings were revenge for the bloodshed of Muslims in Derna, which has been the target of Egyptian airstrikes since last week. Cairo launched these uh, airstrikes after an IS affiliate beheaded 21 Egyptian Christians it had kidnapped. A Libyan government official says eight of those killed in Friday's bomb attacks were Egyptians who had come to Libya for work. Police in the United Kingdom are appealing for information regarding three missing schoolgirls it fears are travelling to Syria via Turkey, possibly to join the extremist group that calls itself Islamic State. The 15- and 16-year-old girls from East London on Tuesday booked seats on a Turkish Airlines flight to Istanbul, but told their families as they left their homes that they were just planning to spend the day together, raising suspicions, obviously. Two of the girls have been identified as Shamimi Begum, 15, and 16-year-old Khadiza Sultana. The third girl, 15 years old, has not been named at the request of her family. The family has told police that they had seen no evidence the girls were being radicalized and are said to be devastated, as you'd imagine. Efforts to get in touch with the girls via their smartphones have failed uh, thus far. Police hope unusually cold weather and heavy snow in Turkey may have prevented them getting to the Turkey-Syria border. Now, Korea is increasingly becoming more uh, multicultural, multi-ethnic society as people from all around the world make a life here. In an effort to help multicultural families and their kids adapt to life in Korea, the government wants to teach them traditional Korean games to hopefully make the transition smoother. Paulie reports. This outing marks a special day for this group of multicultural families who mainly hail from Korea's rural areas. They're learning how to play pitch pot or tuho in Korean. It's a popular age-old game where you try to throw arrows into a jar, once a favorite among Korea's royal families. Later indoors, groups of multi-ethnic families are enjoying a round of arts and crafts. Parents and their children are working hand in hand, which later pays off when they head to the beach. It feels really great coming here and playing additional games like yunnori. In the future, when the whole family gathers together, I want to try playing yunnori with my children. This wide range of programs have been designed to help children from multicultural families to better adapt to life in Korea. The goal is to learn about culture and history while having fun. This camp in particular also focuses on forming support networks as well as bridging relationships with other peers and adults. These age-appropriate interactions promote and improve family relationships. And that's expected to provide a big help for these kids to form a healthy identity, improve their interpersonal relationships or social adaptability. The number of foreigners living in Korea reached nearly 1.6 million people in 2014, making up over 3 percent of the country's total population. That figure has been rising year on year over the last decade and is expected to continue growing. The government hopes that these leading programs will not only welcome this wave of new residents, 
but help them call Korea home. Paul Yi, Arirang News. Now, artisans in Korea have revived the craft of gold thread embroidery lost for 300 years after it was banned uh, back in the 17th century. It's a very tricky process, and artisans and experts have worked tirelessly to try and reconstruct the uh, technique. Sun Jung In reports. The Korean movie The Royal Tailor or Sangi Won revolves around the majestic attire worn by the royal family during the Joseon dynasty. The garments are characterized by their gold embroidery, but the craft disappeared after King Yongjo prohibited the production of extravagant items during the latter half of the 17th century. Now, after nearly 300 years, the craft has been reborn. To make the gold thread, artisans carefully gild mulberry paper with a special glue and then slice the sheets into pieces of thread. Using a lace-making loom, they carefully embroider intricate patterns onto the fabric. The technique was recovered after four years as researchers and artisans poured over literature and studied ancient relics. The most difficult part was selecting the suitable materials, since the properties of the available items are very different now from back then. With the recovery of gold thread embroidery technique, artisans have been able to restore the original forms of other relics as well, including a Joseon era togori or hanbok jacket. Through the tireless efforts of these artisans, the traditional textile craft is recovering its lost light. Sun Jung In, Arirang News. Looks great. Now, before we go, leaving you with a brief look at the weather here in Korea. And it has been and continues to be a wet Saturday across most of the country. The rain should let up by early Sunday morning in the central region, giving way to partly cloudy skies. We're going to see a daytime high of 5 degrees Celsius in Seoul tomorrow, and the mercury will plunge well below freezing on Sunday night. So we could well be waking up to some icy roads on Monday. Now, for our viewers around the world, here's a look at the global weather conditions. Well, that's all we have for now. Uh, do enjoy the rest of your Saturday wherever you're watching us and do stay tuned to Adilang TV. We'll be back again with our next newscast at 10 p.m. Korea time. Till then, goodbye.